All right. Welcome back, friends. So today we're going to do things a bit different here. It's really not that easy to be an artist. And it's even harder to become one. So today I want to talk about five of the worst habits that make things even harder for us than they already are. And along with that, you can watch me paint a few oil sketches into my sketchbook. And as a special, you can see me paint my little trusty companion Mio. So without further ado, let's start with number one on the list. Comparing yourself to others. So number one on the list of worst habits is comparing yourself to others or being envious of others. I know this isn't something that's exclusive to artists and I'm sure that most of us know how bad of an idea it is to compare yourself to others. It's pretty much the safest way to make yourself feel miserable and unhappy. But it happens to all of us. And it happens to me every now and then too. Especially since the rise of social media, this is something that has become much more of an issue than it used to be. And not only when it comes to art or being an artist. But the thing is, we are all incredibly bad at predicting what we want. And even worse at predicting what's good for us. One might think that having hundreds of thousands of followers or subscribers is a very desirable thing. But do you also want to work seven days a week and think about work every day before falling asleep to get to that point. Others want to live in a hip cosmopolitan city, but do they also want to pay thousands of dollars for renting a tiny apartment? From my own experience, I can pretty much guarantee you that it's not all roses. And not everyone can have everything. We all have very different starting points. Some things are easier to achieve for some than for others. And some things aren't actually as desirable as they appear to be. And it's incredibly easy to get caught up in these trains of thoughts. But all they do is distract us from what's really important. And even more importantly, what's realistic. And that is always what's in front of us. Don't compare yourself to others. But if you do, then only compare yourself to your past self. Never try to become someone else. Only try to become a better version of your past self or who you are right at this moment. Number two. Being a paper boat on the sea. Now, what I mean by that is this. Imagine a paper boat that's floating out on the open sea. That paper boat will go exactly wherever even the slightest breeze will carry it. It can go into one direction, but it can also go into the opposite direction the very next minute. It has to. It doesn't have any drive on its own. But it also doesn't have a destination. And it will always go the way of least resistance. And that's something you never ever want to be if you either are an artist or if you want to become one. You don't want to constantly change the direction of your course. And you do want to have a destination or a goal, even several ones. I know how easy it is to constantly second guess what you are doing. Especially when things aren't going exactly the way you want them to. And it's too easy to be reactionary. But it's incredibly important to have goals and even more important to stick to them. Don't give up on a painting or a project or an idea before even finishing it. If you set yourself a goal, you have to follow through. If you decide on a course, then don't constantly question everything. Or think about turning back when you encounter even the slightest bit of resistance. Push through. The best things in life don't come easy. Some things take time, others consistency and yet others resilience. Now, the next one on the list I already know will be controversial, but I want you to hear me out on this. Number three, listening to art YouTubers. The thing is, I have become a huge fan of all these art and building and crafting channels out there. They're kinda addicting. I watch many of them myself. And I love how incredibly entertaining, charming and talented all of those creators out there are. But I watch most of them for what they're actually really intended for, entertainment. You see, YouTube is an interesting platform. The line between professionalism and amateurism and the line between entertainment and didactics often isn't very clear. Just because you have a cooking channel doesn't mean you're a chef. And just because you make great recipe videos doesn't mean that your recipes taste any good. On the flip side, just because you're a chef doesn't mean that you can create interesting and engaging videos on YouTube. Now what I'm not trying to say is that you can't get professional advice by watching YouTube videos. There are some great artists out there making incredibly useful videos. But the truth is that those aren't exactly the videos that get seen the most. 
What's generally promoted the most are the things that are either most entertaining or controversial. And artists that make those videos also tend to be the most influential. But the reality is that many or probably even most of these people talking about art don't really know what they're talking about. And that's because they aren't professional artists. At least not in the traditional sense. They're not really in the business of making and promoting art. They are in the business of creating engaging video content. And often for entertainment purposes. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that, to be honest. And not to mention that it doesn't say anything about the quality or the incredible amount of work these people are putting into their videos. There's actually a lot professional artists can learn from these guys. Which I will get to in my last point. But the fact remains that doing videos about art and having years and years of experience making a living being an artist isn't the same. Now, the irony of me saying that in a YouTube video isn't lost on me. But the thing is, I'm not an art YouTuber. I just started diving into this new medium a few weeks ago. Because I really feel that I can bring something new to the table. And I have to admit that I really enjoy exploring and experimenting with it. But in real life, I'm a professional artist. A professional painter to be precise. And I have been for the past decade. All I can do in a 10 minute video is to encourage and inspire you. or to get you to question some of the things you take at face value. A short video can't replace the journey of being an artist and the experience of learning these things over the years by trial and error. So I guess the takeaway here is to not take the things you hear in all those videos at face value. Pick and choose where you get your information from on this platform and also be a bit more critical when it comes to advice on the internet. Number four. Always doing the same things the same way. I've seen my fair share of one trick ponies come and go over the years. I know how hard it is to find something that works and gets attention. So why would you do anything else once you've found such a thing? Well, once you've found something that works, be it money or attention wise, you have to remind yourself that it's finite, just like anything else. It's very tempting to just stick to it and to do the same things over and over again. And it certainly works for many of the stars of the art world. It's actually exactly the reason why they are so successful. But that concept isn't something that works for most of us. Only a selected few can get away with that. For all the rest of us, well, we have to keep moving and exploring. We constantly have to reinvent ourselves. These days with the short half-life of things on the internet even more. People get used to and bought by everything incredibly quickly. Some Michelin star chef may be able to sell you anything on a plate as long as it comes out of a fancy kitchen. But if you have a food truck with a few items, you better keep the people interested and pleased by regularly changing the menu or by offering new spins on the classics. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to become a paperboat, but you also shouldn't get too comfortable with what you're doing. Because sooner or later you will inevitably find yourself in the position to change what maybe has been working for years. So it's much better to not wait until after the fact. Always stay curious and don't stop exploring. And that leaves us with the last on our list. Number five, being an artist. And this is a big one. In some ways it's even the biggest. You can't keep playing chess when everyone else around you has gone on to play checkers. Times are changing and they certainly have changed for artists. When I started making a living as an artist, there was no Facebook, no Instagram. Being a professional artist was just like one imagines it. You created art and your art sold through galleries. But things change. There are many more different ways of being an artist today than there used to be. And they all have one thing in common. They are not what they appear to be. And they are definitely not what most people think of when they think about the profession of an artist. Intuitively, many of us still gravitate towards being a traditional artist. And that's what many people out there still aspire to become. But the truth is, if you want to be an artist in 2019, you have to stop trying to be an artist. Instead, what you want to do is become an entrepreneur. For better or for worse, that's how things are nowadays. And that's also what all the people creating on YouTube or Patreon or Instagram are. They aren't really artists, if we're honest. And content creator is just a fancy title. What they really are is entrepreneurs. And the truth is, most artists who have been successful in the past, even before the dawn of social media, always have been. Now, this is a topic that I could probably do a whole lecture series on, so I obviously won't be able to go into much more detail here in a 10 minute video. But suffice it to say that 
One of the great things in 2019 is even people that never would have had a chance of making a living in the traditional art world now have all the tools and possibilities to do so. If you are willing to shift your perspective on things and to adapt that is. It's a hard job, but if you're also willing to work hard, well, then there's no doubt that there's also a place for you out there. But with that being said guys, we're gonna bring this video to an end. Thank you all so much for watching, please hit like, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and yeah, have a good one.